IITM lectures. The IITM lectures that I have been given uh, as part of an engineering design course. So the idea there is to take apart a source of a sound, say a flute, a saxophone, a guitar, a violin, and then basically look, using a, a magnifying glass, look at the characteristic of the sound. So. Those who are familiar with the mathematics uh, behind it, obviously there's some calculus involved, some linear algebra involved, right? Uh, and then once we sort of figure out what the math is behind the sound, we take a step back into the actual sound uh, producer. So if it's a flute, it's a flute, whatever the instrument is. And then we think about what is it that made what is it about the physical characteristic, the design characteristic, uh, the construction, the playing technique? What is it about all this that gave us the sound? Uh, for example, um, the tone that emanates from a very nicely tuned violin, a single tone, can be quite complex. Though we hear it as one note. It is made of many things that, is, that are layers to it. Uh, in fact, the single tone, the pure tone, can, can anybody tell me what a pure tone is? Any high school physics people here? Just the definition of a pure tone, because that's a great way to start off any discussion about music, physics or not. Right? Because we have to build music, we build music using tones. Even if it were just a tap on, on a piece of uh, wood, the beginning of a drum, that is a tone involved. So you go back on that idea to its very beginning. There is something called a pure tone. Who can tell me what a pure tone is? Come on. Physics, anybody engineering physics, I, I have to call you out. Sorry. Is it called a chord? Is it the chord? A chord is actually a complicated tone. In fact, it's not a tone at all, it's a summation of tones. Uh, but at least I'm glad that you're coming up with a terminology term that refers to one, one bit of sound, right? One thing that you can hear at a time. Who has done physics here? Engineering. All right. High school, college. college. Okay. What's a pure tone? Um, is it just a note? Okay. <coughs> In, in physical terms, in, in mathematical terms, how will you describe a note? Just like one half of the sine wave? Very good, sine wave. That's the answer that I was looking for. It is simply a sine wave. It can be a half, it can be a quarter, it can be a whole train, it can be infinite. Um, when you strike a tuning fork, we have all done this experiment come on. in school at some point or the other. You strike a tuning fork and you hold it against your ear or put it on, on a a piece of amplification for wood or something, you hear a tone, it is the purest and the most boring tone. Okay. Musically, there's absolutely nothing that is alluring about it. It's a simple sine wave, like he rightly pointed out. And the simple sine wave being just this, right, over and over again, somewhat, you know, bores the mind if you hear it for more than like a few seconds at a time. But what it has, it has all the properties that you need to start off with your musical journey, right? It has a, what are the properties? It has a amplitude, very good, otherwise known as volume, uh, frequency. frequency, very good, and that's all you can't answer in <laughs> No, just kidding, I just, just get answers, these are all things you know. The frequency is um, also known as uh, pitch, very good. Um, in Indian music, what do we call the frequency? Shruti, thank you. Wow. So I have uh, an audience that is already enlightened but testing me. <laughs> right? I'm going to confine today's talk only to melody, um, even though there will be elements of rhythm. Right? So again, rhythm is a subject that can be studied. Nothing that I say today will be surprising. Okay, you guys know it. Um, 
I'm just going to try and just try these answers out of you. Uh, and then when I come back, I'll challenge you with something really different. Uh, so today is this 101. Okay, so rhythm is there within us, without us, everywhere around us. Melody is a little harder to find. Okay, so melody needs a, some sort of sing song, right? Um, I could speak without melody, or I could speak with a lot of melody. So some kind of uh, speeches are dull, drab, boring because they don't have any melody. But then there are some which are very appealing. They have a lot of drama in it because that's melody. But this is not the melody we are talking about. We are talking about specific melody, melody that makes music as we understand. It, right? Um, so now we are moving on to slightly more interesting and uh, you know deeper waters. Right? What is it that is interesting to me as a melody it may not be interesting to you as a melody. Right? But we can agree on certain basic definitions. Like we already did, we established that a musical tone has a frequency, it has an amplitude, it has timber. Timber is the quality of the sound. Violin timber versus saxophone timber versus voice timber versus, right? So now that we have a basic agreement, my goal today is to is for us to, as a team, come up with an idea of a melody an idea, okay? Not necessarily a melody itself, but an understanding of what it takes to, to be melodious. And then we can build on that idea, okay? Um, so a little bit, little uh, sort of biography about myself. I studied music with Dr. Mangalapalli Balamulli Krishna, Dr. M. Balamulli Krishna, some of you, most of you, I hope, have heard of him. Um, he was a legendary musician. He died not more than two years ago. Um, I studied with him since I was a young boy. I was about 11 when I went to him. I had already trained in Carnatic vocal music. And with him, I, I was inspired to also learn instruments, to write my own songs, to imagine and compose and create music. Right? Um, okay. um, there is a similar sort of idea in, in Western music, the soul fa, where it is do, right? the famous song do. So that is sariga, uh, and sa is the basic note. So can we all try and uh, do a little sa singing? Right? Okay. Uh, I'll lead. All you have to do is repeat. Okay. All right. Okay. No tambura, nothing. No instruments. We'll just start with that. And then I'll I'll give you something musical to just listen to and feel and to that. Right? That's all. I'm going to use that as my tantra, the fan. I think this is here. So. Define what is known as a an octave. Right. So one sa to the next sa is a jump of an octave. In the world of frequencies, you are doubling the frequency. Right. In the world of sound, you are singing the next octave note. This is common terminology almost in all world music. It's agreed that these two notes form the best sort of uh, um, harmony. They are the perfect unison, right? So when we all sing, sa, that's right. Sa, we don't sound tired at all. <laughs> so if we were to sing only one note, let it be sa. 
But does one note make a rag? It's like, does one cuckoo make, make a spring? Does one note make a rag? Does uh, alone, does it define anything for you? It's a trick question. <laughs> Be the grace of yes, yeah. <laughs> When I sing, sa, I always begin my sadhana, my riyas, I practice with my tankura, which I didn't bring today. Um, but plucking it and just immersing myself in that one note, right? and I spend a good 10 to 15 minutes. I recommend it for those who have problems sleeping. Um, but while I am doing that, my mind is swimming in a world of ideas. It is not staying still. No, I like for it to stay still sometimes. But more often than not, it is going off to a raga, to another raga. Mostly, good news is it is within the world of music that it's swimming. Um, but then there is, in the first few minutes of my uh, singing, it is just a free floating. Okay, it's it's just a flow of consciousness across the world of ragas, and not only limited to the world of Indian ragas. It goes across practically every melody that I have heard recently or thought of recently. Right. So my mind is doing this sort of a, a unconscious sweep of the world of music, the mel melodies that I heard. <clears throat> While I sweep. Um, I do have, as an engineer, I am always optimizing. Okay. I tend to want to arrive at a solution that is too deeply drilled down in me. I can't do things without an objective. Right. Um, so, what happens is my mind is thinking, Enna ragam What raga okay. I am thinking of my practice session being as fulfilling as possible so that I can grab this fantastic musical idea called a raga. And then I'm thinking, which raga should I sing, right? Okay, I'm going to leave you with that idea. This is the problem that I face every day, okay? What raga should it be? And I'm going to play a little bit of something for you, right? And then we can talk about it and then I'll take it forward.
can relate to Nepali with this, with this melody, and I have in the past. I have worked closely with the Nepali flute, which we have played concerts together. We just pick up the flute and start playing party, and he's like, yeah, I know this. And then we jam, right? This is the beauty of music. It really brings barriers down. I mean, that is really like, you have to feel it, uh, experience it, to believe in this rhetoric that music brings barriers, right? So, at least within the subcontinent, we have this whole body of um, musical ideas that are these ragas, right? So, what defines a bhadi, right? That is a chalan, the, the, what we call the swarup of the raga, swarup of right? The raga moves in a certain way, right? It, it traverses the path of notes, of expression, of arrangements of notes. And what happens in between those notes, right? When you have notes, they are arranged in frequencies, they are all laid down on a keyboard, right? There is one and the sharp and the flat and the other, right? What happens in between those notes is key to the experience of a raga, okay? Right, so um, I want to, <coughs> this is a particularly uh, important concept to illustrate, so I'll use my voice. Except for you know two exceptions or three exceptions, where the sa tends to be the locus, right? There is a sort of calm there. Then pa, which is the next most important note of a, of, of a raga, right? If there is a pa, there is. There is a fifth sa re ga ma pa. Right? The fifth note of a scale tends to give it. A lot of stability. Uh, Sa pa pa or Sa pa Sa pa. Very good. Again, Sa pa Sa pa. Now let's go down. Sa. 
So the sapasa has been drilled down into it, which is which goes back to my Guruji's uh, joke about na sa paadu hai, sa paadu, the sa and pa in that way. It's a basic, basic requirement. Now, with sa and pa, what can we do? Musical. Can we do something? I'm going to try. Okay. It may not work. I haven't tried this before. Uh, but since I have this instrument, my hands will be good. Sounds like supper? Yeah. Statistically, most ragas have these two notes. You can have ragas without the pa quite often. And ragas even without the sa, freakish as it might sound, they are also there. It's there's a nirigama kind of ragas. Okay. So there are all kinds of ragas. Uh, sapa is, is basic. Now, what we can do, we are going to stick to the idea of sapa. Okay? I like it. It's a fifth. It's a great <laughs> interval. Um, the philosophers have studied it. Right? It's, a, it's a famous interval. Let's go and look it up. Now, <clears throat> if I were to move my sa a little bit, that's it. This was my sa, right? Suppose I use this as my sa. Sa. Right? Sa. Pa. So I have a set of sapasa. Now two sets of sapasa. This. Now let's try to mix them up, right? I'll do it for you. Some sort of uh, some some sort of verb to this. Okay, now I'm going to add the magic ingredient to this mix. We have four notes. I want to add one note to it. Okay, it could be anything. Hmm? 
Yeah. I thought the magic was you. Me, I'm the magic. You are the magic. Um, the magic is an inspired idea that probably dates millennia. Millennia. This is one of the oldest ragas in the world. It is in every raga system, every musical system, and every continent there is almost. Gives you is the palette. Right? 
and then you can paint with it. Now we have Mohana now, sort of a defined raga. <laughs> Right. Now what we can do is we can tinker with one of the notes. Right. Say ga. Right. I'm adding an extra note to that. Now it changes the whole mood of the rag. Ka 
Because if you do, then you will go hungry till till it's dust. 